What is stopping you from recording? Why is it that you aren't able to record as soon as you need to? That's what we're going to talk about today on how to talk for money. So the impetus of this video is generally just the voiceover community online, specifically Reddit, r slash voice acting. I see a lot of posts where people are showing off their booth, which makes sense. You put a lot of work and time into it. You want to show off your work and time. So the problem I always see with these posts is there's no recording. They'll show pictures and they'll talk about all the materials you, they used and everything like that. But they won't give us a, a clip of the audio, which is not super helpful. I mean, as I post on pretty much all of these, I say, looks great. But do you have a recording from that space? It's only as good as it sounds. It doesn't matter how nice a booth looks. What matters is how good the booth sounds. And often people will say either I don't have one or they'll say I'll make one, but I can't do it right now. And... While afraid might be hyperbole, obviously, it's not like you're petrified, oh, I can't, I can't do it, I, I just sit at the mic and I just can't record. That's not often what the case is, obviously. It's more roadblocks, it's different things in the process that mean that you can't quite do what you want to do as far as recording goes. So the question is, why does it take so long to record? And what is it that's preventing people from recording right then, right as soon as they need to, or right as soon as they get a request. I mean, it doesn't take much work, really. And that's what I want to analyze here. I want to explore why is it that people need more time than some others to record stuff and what is preventing them from doing so. Thing one is kind of two parts. It's time management and it's uh, workflow inefficiency. Probably a better way to put that, but essentially it's you don't have time. Because either A, you have a lot of other things going on, understandable, or you don't have time because it takes you a long time to record. It takes you a long time to set up, to get in there and actually do the recording, to edit it out the way you want to, all of that. And that's, that's unfortunate because while I'm just a rando on the internet asking like, hey, can I get a quick recording, you know, five seconds, whatever, to hear how good this booth sounds that you're showing off. Like, you should probably want to show off how it sounds as much as you'd want to show off how it looks. But if there's a client, someone who's paying you money, they want their audio immediately. They want it as soon as possible. So having to wait, having to make them wait because you can't record immediately, it's not great. And it mm, is not going to make a great client relationship and might lose you some clients. So it's important to be able to get in there, record, edit it, get it sent off fast as possible. I have, right now my workflow is at a point where I can just get the copy, say it's about 30 second ad, get in my booth, record it, do all that, get it back to the client, about five, 10 minutes, if it's only about 30 seconds, you know, obviously that gets longer as it gets, you know, larger, the larger the copy, obviously more stuff, more work. I would highly, highly recommend, I would highly encourage you to Take the copy I put down below, which it's going to have some hard words, it's going to have some other stuff, but about 30 seconds of copy. Read that, test it out. Try and record as quick as you can. Time yourself, time each step of the process and see how long does it take me? You know, how long do I need to look up these harder words? How long does it take me to actually record all of it? How many mistakes am I making that are slowing me down? How quickly am I able to edit it and process it and all of that so that it's ready for a client? time it and try and figure out where your bottleneck is, where you're getting slowed down. It's not that hard to do to get yourself efficient. It just takes some time and practice. I've been voice acting for quite a while, so I've gotten pretty decent at doing it quickly. And in reality, the recording is the smallest part of the gig. The preparation is a larger part, and that's just acting in general. It's all preparing for the role, preparing for your performance, getting yourself in the right mindset, doing all of your research, once you're actually there, it happens very quickly, very efficiently. It's a temporal kind of art form. You have to keep it going. So number two would probably be actual fear, like nervousness, be being shy, not being able to feel confident enough that you can actually do what you want to do with your voice while you're on the mic. And that's just practice. You just, you just got to practice it. Like I've known a ton of actors who are shy they're naturally not very outgoing or confident people but 
when they actually perform, they've learned, they've trained, they've practiced to actually be confident and charismatic on the mic. And you could never tell that they were shy if you just listened to the recordings. So just got to practice, you know, take some time, get like a kid's book or whatever. I got a, like a bunch of Goosebumps books. I do this every now and then and just sit in the booth, record it, listen back, just practice, you know, figure out what can I do with the mic? Should I, should I get a little closer to get a little more bass or should I get a little farther away so I can be loud and energetic? Figure it out. You know, those are the very basic techniques. There's so many others you can learn just by practicing. So to fix your confidence problem, practice, take a class, whatever. It's, it's acting first and foremost. And again, it's just preparation. Like the, the recording is the most simple, simple part of it. All of the preparation beforehand is really the, the most important part. Even as a business, this, this business is about preparation. It's about getting your stuff set up so that you can do things quickly. It might take a lot of work to get it all ready to go, but the actual performance, the actual recording shouldn't take very long at all. Which brings me to number three, which is your booth isn't exactly efficient itself. I know, I know you put a lot of work into it, but a lot of booths have problems because acoustics are weird and kind of an inexact science. You know, sometimes you can do the bare minimum and get amazing sound and sometimes you can do everything and there's still something weird that doesn't quite work. But it's also a matter of, you know, how comfortable is your booth to sit in? Like, it doesn't have to be a luxurious place, but how well are you able to just sit there and be able to do stuff? Is it affecting your performance? Is it making you make more mistakes because you have trouble breathing because there's not enough ventilation because you don't have enough room to move around to really get whatever kind of breath or, or, or volume or just characteristic into it. Like these are things to think about with your booth. I have a tiny booth and I'm a pretty big person. I'm like six, two over 200 pounds. And I, just barely fit in there so there are times where i have to take a break get out stretch make sure i'm not all cramped up in there because it can affect my performances and similarly it's like maybe your booth isn't super efficient in stuff and this goes back to workflow it's uh you should be able to just hit record get in there get it done and get out but if you're having a hit record while you're in there and then the computer fans going and you you got all this stuff in the way so you got to fiddle around and you gotta scoot stuff around and you gotta adjust it on the fly yeah it's gonna take longer so it's important to make a permanent fixture like i know these these blanket booths and these these sort of like couch cushion forts they can sound good but they're not convenient they're they're a pain because you have to adjust them pretty much every time just to get in and out so make something at least semi-permanent that you can get into do your stuff and get out with minimal hassle so that you're not making your clients wait. Simple as that. Fourth. And this one, I mean no offense to anyone because this is a simple mistake and a lot of people make it because a lot of people who voice act are first and foremost performers. They're not audio technicians. They're not audio engineers. They're not an acoustic ologist, scientist, person who studies acoustics. I don't know what the specific term is. Your booth might not sound good, period. And, and, and this isn't necessarily about what's stopping you personally from doing the, per, the performance, from getting in there and recording, but specifically why your recordings might be having trouble. Because you'll hear this a lot. What's important is that you get a clean signal going in to the mic. It doesn't matter what you can do to it in post. There are magical things you can do with stuff like RX-7, with all sorts of different stuff, any kind of plugins, all sorts of editing tricks you can do, which can get you somewhat better audio. But in reality, you just have to have a booth that actually sounds good. And I hear a lot of booths that don't, unfortunately. And I hear a lot of people who lose clients because of it, who they're sending out this audio that is subpar. It is not up to professional standards and they lose clients because of it. And the clients are just like, the clients won't say anything because they don't have the time to give you critique. And so these people uh, just get frustrated and they quit because they're like, I don't know why I keep losing clients. I don't know what's going on. I thought I had this good booth. I put in all this foam. I made this, this blanket thing that everybody told me to do. And in reality, it probably just doesn't sound great. And I hear that a lot. That's what it, a lot of times when I see these posts with the booths, like I was talking about at the beginning, 
a lot of times when I do get those recordings, the audio isn't that great. They focus too much on aesthetics and on convenience, and they didn't focus enough on the actual sound, which is, as I said, far more important than any other aspect. If it doesn't sound good, it doesn't matter how good it looks, because it doesn't sound good. You can't use that audio. So it's, it's important to make sure your audio is actually good. If you are still inexperienced, which is often the case, I mean, you got to start somewhere, you should talk to someone who is experienced. Just, you know, anybody you know. It's a big community. Just reach out to people who have more experience and be like, hey, can you listen to my audio? Let me know what problems there are. And, you know, maybe they'll do it for free and be a favor kind of thing. Some of them might want to charge you, but it's a business, so it's an investment. And, hey, you can write that off on your taxes as a business expense, so... I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. So yeah, it's it's important to have your audio sound good. And the better your audio sounds when you're recording, the less time you're going to have to edit it. Like when I edit, I can do it pretty quickly because my audio already sounds pretty good. All I'm doing in the processing, which is all you should be doing in the processing, is just gentle correction because the mic is not going to perfectly capture what's going on. Same as with like this camera. This is not what I look like in person. Be, yeah, like my face is so much more blown out because that's more light that the camera's getting. If we were talking in person, I would probably look a little less washed out and kind of light, but uh, I'm, I'm audio. I don't really do video as much. An imperfect recreation. And it's the same with audio. And you just want to get it as close as possible. And then processing should be just a little bit, just a little bump so that you can, you know, get it more true to real life. It shouldn't be a big thing that makes you sound like a big old movie trailer announcer. It should just be a little gentle nudge, you know, add back in, boost up the frequencies that got removed or, you know, lessened by your particular mic, you know, take out the things that you wouldn't hear in person. You're just trying to make it sound more like it would if the person was actually there with you. You know, I mean, unless you're doing some kind of major production and you're trying to make it sound like all this artistic stuff and you want it to sound like very specifically one way and very specifically processed to give it a specific feel, that's a whole other thing. But if we're talking voiceovers that you're making for clients, simple changes. It should be good audio going in and then tiny changes after. So first and foremost, you need a booth that sounds good. And so first and foremost... You should be wanting to record so that you can be hearing back. You get play it, listen to it. Does it sound good? And the easiest test, and I know this sounds like it's it's kind of unfair. Does it sound like something you'd see on TV, in a movie, on radio? If it doesn't, figure out how you can make it do that. It's not hard. It's it's honestly audio is incredibly easy to work with. It's so easy to hide a cut. It's so easy to make the audio up to broadcast standards with simple equipment and very basic know-how. You don't need to do that much or know that much to be able to accomplish it. And that's where we get to the final thing here. The reason I point this all out and the reason I, it concerns me is because I want people to be able to work in this industry. It's a wonderful industry. And yeah, it's a lot of work to set up and stuff. And it's a lot of work in all of the preparation and the marketing and the gathering the clients, the actual performance, the actual recording is so much fun and really not that hard compared to all the other work to get the work. But so many people are kind of kneecapping themselves. They're, they're giving themselves a bad shake because they didn't put enough work into it to begin with. They didn't get the audio they needed. They didn't get the workflow they needed. They didn't get the confidence they needed. And they just jumped right into trying to gather clients and they weren't ready. They didn't have everything they needed to get clients. They, they jump in way too early. And I understand. It's exciting. It's, it, you want to get clients. You want to get money. You want to start working. Say that you're a professional. But a lot of you are not ready yet. And that's fine. Like, everybody's at different levels of experience, and you're always going upwards. That's the great thing about experience. But if you're not at the level yet, like, there is a lower bar to entry. If you're not there yet, and you try and get clients, you're just going to be burning bridges, because they're going to hear your audio that's not ready yet. They're going to be hearing your performance that isn't confident enough yet. They're going to be seeing how long it takes you to record, and they don't care if you know, you have a good reason for that. 
because they're paying you good money. And if you can't give them what they need, you can't perform as well as they need, you can't give them the professional quality audio that they need, you can't give them the timeline that they need and get it to them as fast as possible, there's a thousand people who can. So, so many people who can, who have the audio, who have the time, who have the performance. And even if you're a million times a better actor than them, if you aren't ready yet, you're going to lose that job to someone who is. So I highly, highly recommend before anything else, you make sure your booth is actually up to snuff and sounds good. You're able to record quickly and deliver quickly. You're able to perform without having to worry about your confidence getting in the way or any other thing. It's so much preparation. And again, that's acting in general. It's so much preparation. But once you have the preparation behind you, everything else just snowballs and gets bigger and larger and it just works. You just got to put in the work. You got to put in the research, the time, the practice, the effort, all of it. And if you do that, you can succeed. And I believe you can succeed. I believe everybody who watches this can succeed at voiceover if they actually put in the time and work. And that's not to say that you're lazy for not doing so. There can be some misinformation out there and a lot of people don't realize what work they need to do. So hopefully this will put you on the right path to recognizing that maybe you have a lot more work to do before you're ready to start getting clients. And this goes for volunteer work too, for fan projects and things. If your audio is not good, like generally, the director of a thing who's putting out a casting call, they're going to look at all of the audio first and foremost. So if you're a great, great actor, super performance, perfect for the role, but your audio sucks and they're going to have to do a lot more work to make your audio work with everybody else's, they're probably going to look at the guy who's not as good, maybe not as perfect for the role, but he's got amazing, amazing audio. It's going to be less work for them and... At a certain point, that matters more than the actual performance. That's just the business. And even if you're not doing it for money, it's still a business and you're still being treated the same way they would treat any freelancer, even if they're not paying you. So with all of that in mind, I hope you the best in whatever voiceover ambitions you have. I do believe you can do that. And I hope you will watch more of these videos because I'm trying to make more that will hopefully steer people in the right direction towards succeeding in voiceover. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you watch some of my other stuff. Subscribe, comment, all that nonsense. I can be found on Twitter at IggyDKid, Twitch, twitch.tv slash IggyKid. All that spiel, you know how it is. Eh, we gotta market ourselves 24-7, right? I hope you'll join me in some of those places. And I hope to see you guys out there someday. I hope to hear some of your recordings and... I hope you do well. I hope you the best, the absolute best, because I believe you can do it. And I want to thank you very much for watching and listening. And I hope you do make some money from talking. Goodbye, everybody.